Hi, everyone. Uh, Seth Page. I uh, flew in yesterday from Silicon Valley. Uh, today, we're going to talk about automating data science um, with meta-machine learning uh, as an overlay in order to get at industrial IoT, FinTech, and InsTech, and where the convergence of those industries are. Uh, if you look at traditional data science today, it's completely broken, right? You've got data scientists throwing algorithms against the wall, manually tuning them over time, playing with them in a sandbox, and hoping they get some results over weeks, months, sometimes even years. And the big problem we have coming with that is that we aren't just playing with click data anymore or transactional data. We've got a big wave of industrial IoT data, which includes whether it's from ATMs to cars to wearables to devices, smart actuators, smart sensors, smart machinery. This information is growing both exponentially in volume exponentially in number of devices and exponentially in frequency of how often they're, they're tying in. So we have this massive machine-to-machine -machine wave that's going to make up 40% of all internet traffic in the world in less than four years. And yet, us humans have done virtually nothing to adapt to it, right? We're still using arcane models that were developed decades ago to try to play with it. The good news is if you look at the opportunities there for the companies that are disrupting themselves or disrupting the, the status quo, there's over $11 trillion in economic uh, benefit that's out there just for IoT. And if you look at FinTech alone for the underserved or the under or unbanked that are out there, two and a half billion people worldwide, you're looking at an additional $9 billion plus a lot of stuff going on in InsTech. So there's a lot of opportunity to go in and grab uh, a piece of these shares as some of the larger incumbents, either A, don't catch up, or B, just don't disrupt themselves enough. Uh, the four main challenges you have when dealing with machine data is one, extremely weak signal to noise ratios. You have massive amounts of data with tiny, tiny signals over long periods of time. And you're, you aren't looking at a couple things that are interconnected. You're looking at hundreds, thousands, even hundreds of thousands of data points over long periods of time that are hyper interconnected. It's kind of like when you get in a fight with your wife or your husband. It's not the last thing that you did that pissed her off. It's a whole series of events going on probably a year or two and a lot of related events and drinking too late with buddies and showing up too late for a business meeting, what have you. Um, that's what we're dealing with here to the 20th power. Um, we're also dealing with obsolete models, right? People play with cute little graphs and cute little dashboards in the sandbox. The reality is if the models that you build don't work in operations and don't give you an 80 plus percent accuracy rate, then you're just wasting your time even hiring the data scientist to begin with. Sorry, backwards. Um, also, IoT, FinTech, InsTech information is extremely hard. You've got structured, unstructured data. You've got labels, non-labels in there. You've got all sorts of stuff being dumped into these Hadoop data lakes, which is fantastic as a storage medium, but there's no happy ending. Like If you aren't building apps on top of that to do something, you're not going to get any actionable insights out of that. And finally, this is not a human scale issue. You cannot throw enough humans from China, from Mexico, from Malaysia, from America, from anywhere at the problem. You've got, in the US alone, over 250,000 data science jobs open right now. That's growing to a million in the next four years. You look in other countries, you see similar metrics. It's the hottest job there is, and 80% of what they do is dig trenches and shovel dirt. It's the boring stuff. They're not doing the fun stuff, so they also want help. That's where we come in. We offer data science automation, and we do it by teaching machines to teach other machines how to automate the data science process, right? That way humans can stay up at the higher layer with domain knowledge and oversee the system to make sure that it's still making sense, but they aren't sitting there digging ditches, digging tunnels, and doing the dirty work. The way we do that is what we call algorithmic survival of the fittest. We run tens of thousands of models in parallel. We hypertune the parameters, the features, the attributes in real time to create an ensemble of models that are a highly accurate representation, not of a little sample of your data set, but of the entire data set, petabytes and petabytes of data. And it's not just a static interpretation. It's a real-time living model that this new data comes in from these devices that are growing ever faster and ever stronger, and legacy data stores, and new data stores, and new feature stores. It's updating itself automatically and modifying itself on the fly. And on the back end, it's plugging into your CRM, your CMS, your ERP, whatever systems you have, Salesforce, SAP, Oracle, Google, we really don't care, but at the green plum with GE, at the end of the day, your people are already trained on those systems, so let's deliver them the insights and the predictive power they need on a platform they're familiar with. But what that does for you is it gives you continuous improvement and allows you to do all these great things like predict asset failures, maintenance, quality issues, warranty issues, predict fraud, predict intrusion, um, micro-segment your, your, your database in a way you've never done before to provide a better UX, a better UI, and then corrective actions, ultimately. There we go. 
Take a look at the car, right? The cars have evolved over the last 100 years. Whoops, all right. And um, as they've evolved, their data has evolved too. Why do you care? Well, in four years, three out of four cars in the US are gonna be connected. What does that mean? Well, you may not wanna pay two, you know, 20 bucks a month for two gigabytes, but Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, and everyone else, Tesla, Mercedes, is gonna be uploading through that data link all of your car information anyways. Tesla's already doing it, right? And so when you're driving down the road in your new Tesla X and suddenly the X doors open at 65 miles an hour, that's happened to our friends over at Bessemer, right? And your kids are in the back in the middle of rush hour, that's something that Lou and Elon would really like to figure out why it happened. Now they've got 10 million lines of code, they've got thousands of suppliers, they've got tens of thousands of employees and subcontractors. So how does that one event and all the late log data that's captured locally and in the cloud and all of the data from all of the sensors on that production line and the insurance company that are backing the crash that may have happened afterwards, how does that all tie in? Who's responsible? Is it them? Is it the software? Is it the hardware? Is it the supplier? Insurance companies and fintech companies need to be thinking about the larger picture. How do I insure against these larger, very interesting cases? And also, how do I insure against the plague? How do I build models that actually can, can, uh, can take a look at the Zika virus and take a lot of additional information into, into retrospect that normally the models today currently don't do? If you look at cars, 300,000 exabytes of data will be produced in four years, which is massive. Humans can't do anything about that, right? You can't, you can't process it. Um, who cares? Flow cares, right? Insurance companies care too. This is a long slide, I won't go through it, but really, real quick, insurance companies, everyone in here, arcane, old, manual models that are based on the last century, not this century, in some cases two centuries ago. Low NPS scores like the cable company, even though it's a $1 trillion business today, huge opportunities, and it's time for an evolution. Stop selling long, complicated products to post-millennials, right? People are looking for on-demand, short-term, real-time quotes on micro-insurance products that they can use now. That's the on-demand economy. Gotcha. So you really need to productionize your big data, weaponize your big data, and to do that, you need to be able to automate your data science. And if you do that, you can disrupt yourself and not be disrupted by anyone else. Um, these are the kind of results you get. Those are the kind of customers we have. I'm gonna skip right through it. These are the Alliance Channel partners we have. These are the kind of strategic advisors we pull together. Um, uh, four founders, sorry, we crashed there. Go back one. And that was uh, 15 companies and 10 exits between us. And uh, the Series B, we just kicked off on Sand Hill Road three weeks back, so we're happy to talk to anyone here who's in that business or uh, corporate CVCs. And if you need to talk to me, I'm here, Seth Page. Thank you very much.